If you're going to play a ballad with someone and you want it to be anything deeper than this just sort of surface, you're going to have to be vulnerable for the mm. other person. And that's what the audience wants yeah. to see too. Jazz is all about vulnerability. So you got to vulnerability. Put it out there. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Because we're improvising, you know, and we're not coming to the bandstand with a preconceived notion of what we're going to play. We have to be open and available and vulnerable to really make that connection with ourselves and with the other musician. Even when I'm ostensibly accompanying him and he's ostensibly taking a solo, we're still having this conversation. So it may mean, for instance, that he plays a melodic idea and then I respond to it sort of in real time and I might even give him something back that then he responds to again. Yeah, and and I'm always way, looking you know. for something. And he's kind of waiting you know, for like, it. He's I, like, like, come on, what do you got? You <laughs> like, know? what do you got? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and all, because I don't have anything. <laughs> I mean, I always, I always feel like, um, as an improviser, I mean, I feel a little hamstrung by this instrument and its role in jazz because it's basically a soloistic instrument. You know, I play melodies, maybe some uh, accompanying harmonies if there's another horn player, and then I'll take a solo. I have to go stand at the side of the stage. You know, I have rhythm section envy because they get to like be in there and, and, and always, you know, they're always listening, always reacting. But I feel like my best ideas often don't come from me. They come from the other musicians that I'm playing with and especially when I'm playing with someone like Brad. I asked for a demonstration and the two launched into some blues. One thing that Josh does that's very exciting for me as an, uh, an accompanist is that I throw him a curve in the middle of his phrase. So he was starting to start a phrase that was a little more conventional. And he was going to kind of wrap it up, okay, we gave you an illustration, by returning to the melody. And then I, in the middle of that phrase, I sort of went... And I harmonically <laughs> went off the chart of what would be the normal harmony there in this 12-bar blues we're playing. In real time, somehow, he heard me doing that and adjusted his phrase in the middle of the phrase. Is that a, a, an intellectual process that he just described where he switches and you have to react quickly or, <laughs> that's a, or that's it just happens? That's an excellent happens? question. Whatever it is, if I feel like it's an intellectual process, then I'm not successful. It's not, it's not it's, gonna work. It's an yeah. emotional, it's an intuitive process. I mean, of course it's happening in the brain, right? But if I'm thinking about responding in that way, then I'm overthinking it, and I probably won't do it, do it well. It's very exciting to really improvise and to have that moment. And it's also very social music, you know, you, a lot of times you're with other people. And to have that white heat kind of uh, communication between another musician, uh, it's, it's really exciting. It's a great time to be a jazz musician. After